Hello, grade five math students. This is chapter 2.6, Order of Operations, where I'll introduce you to my Aunt Sally. In this lesson, we're going to learn to use order of operations to simplify a numeric expression. So what on earth is a numeric expression? A numeric expression is a number sentence that contains numbers and operation symbols, but it doesn't include an equal sign. 96 minus 26 plus 48 is an example of a numeric expression. Let's begin learning about order of operations with this word problem. 96 commuters are on a train. At the next station, 26 commuters get off and 48 commuters get on. How many commuters are on the train now? We can actually write this problem as one numeric expression. You could work the problem by taking 96 minus 26 and solving for 70, then taking 70 plus 48 to solve for 118 and get your final answer. But it would be much simpler if we were able to write this as one step. We can write a single numeric expression in this way. We begin with our 96 commuters on the train. 26 commuters get off the train, so we'll subtract those away and then we add our 48 commuters that get on the train. Now how do we solve this in the correct order? Order of operations tells us that we work from left to right. Reading the number sentence just the way you would if it were a sentence composed of words. So let's solve this numeric expression by working from left to right. 96 minus 26 equals 70 plus 48. 70 plus 48 equals 118, giving us the answer that 118 commuters are now on the train. Solve these four numeric expressions on your own in your homework notebook. Remember to work from left to right. Now let's try a number expression using multiplication and division, working from this word problem. Rogers and Company orders 40 cartons of paper towels from Diego's paper store. Each carton contains 24 rolls of paper towels. The paper store delivers 60 rolls of paper towels each day. How many days will it take for the paper store to deliver all of the paper towels? All right, so we're going to build our number sentence as follows. We have 40 cartons of paper towels, which contain 24 rolls of paper towels. So that will express as 40 times 24. That represents our total number of rolls. If the paper store delivers 60 rolls of paper towels each day, how many days will it take for the paper store to deliver all of our rolls? So we'll solve that by dividing by 60, since 60 rolls are showing up each day. Okay, now that we understand the problem, I'll explain how to simplify this expression and find our answer. Just as with our problem that included addition and subtraction, we are going to work from left to right, just as we would read a number sentence. So first, we will evaluate the first expression, which is 40 times 24. 40 times 24 gives us an answer of 960. Our second step will be to divide 960 by 60, which gives us an answer of 16. So the answer to our simplified problem is 16 days to deliver all of the paper towels. Now try simplifying these four expressions on your own. Please write your answers in your homework notebook. Remember, always work from left to right. Let's look at another word problem to help us build an expression that we can simplify. There are 28 children and 56 men at a park. The number of men is four times the number of women. How many children and women are at the park? All right, so we know we have 28 children and 56 men at the park. So we'll add those two numbers together. If the number of men is four times the number of women, how many children and women will be at the park? In order to calculate the number of women that will be in the park, we'll have to divide the number of men, which we know is 56, by 4. 
So here is our number of expression that will help us solve how many children and women are at the park. Before we begin, let's think a little bit harder about what this expression really is telling us. In our past problems, we've worked from left to right no matter what. But if we were to add the number of children to the number of men, we wouldn't get the correct answer if we then divided by four. The problem tells us that the number of men is four times the number of women, not that the number of women is the men plus the children divided by four. This problem helps us to see one of the rules of order of operations, and that is that you always complete multiplication and division before addition and subtraction. Remember at the beginning of the lesson, I promised to introduce you to my dear Aunt Sally? Well, here she is. My multiplication, D, division, Aunt, addition, Sally, subtraction. You always will complete the simplification of expressions by going in the order of my dear Aunt Sally, multiplication or division, and then addition or subtraction. Remember, with multiplication and division, it doesn't matter if you divide or multiply first as long as you're working left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction. You might subtract first and then add as long as you're following the rule of working left to right. So let's solve this problem following my dear Aunt Sally. My dear Aunt Sally says we have to divide before we add. So 56 divided by 4 equals 14. Our next number expression is 28 plus 14. 28 plus 14 is 42. So the number of women and children at the park will be 42. Let's try another example like this. Sarah has 900 stamps in her collection. She arranges 25 stamps on each page of a stamp album. The album has 30 pages. How many stamps are left? All right, we know Sarah begins with 900 stamps. She's going to arrange 25 stamps per page on 30 pages. We want to know how many stamps she has left when she's done with this process. So we're going to subtract our 25 times 30 from our 900. Now let's follow my dear Aunt Sally and solve this problem. My dear Aunt Sally tells us that we have to complete our multiplication problem first because M comes before S, subtraction. So 25 times 30 will be 750. So Sally has organized 750 stamps onto her 30 pages. Let's take that away from our 900. We can subtract now that we've completed our multiplication, giving us an answer of 150 stamps remaining in her collection. What would happen if we didn't follow the My Dear Aunt Sally rule? Let's just work from left to right, ignoring My Dear Aunt Sally, and see what answer we get. If we were to take 900 minus 30, we would get 870 times 25. What would 870 times 25 equal? It would equal 21,750. Wait a second, that doesn't even make sense. If Sarah started with 900 stamps in her collection and she put 25 stamps on each of 30 pages, how can she have more stamps when she's done than she started with? You can see here that just a little bit of logic in assessing the word problem and the number expression will help you see if you have followed my dear Aunt Sally correctly. This answer clearly does not work. Try these six expressions on your own. Simplify each expression, working from left to right, completing multiplication and division before addition and subtraction. Remember, always follow the My Dear Aunt Sally rule. So if addition appears before multiplication, working from left to right, you'll still complete the multiplication step first. Show me your work so I can understand your thinking and can help you address any confusion when I see your work tomorrow. Let's build another numeric expression to learn another step of our order of operations. This problem states, there are 670 boys 
and 530 girls at a track and field event. Each student participates in one event. Each event has 40 students participating. How many events are there? So we need to take the total number of boys and girls, add it together, and then divide that number by 40. Will this statement work? Take a look at it and think about it for a moment. No, it won't work. What this statement is telling us to do is to divide the number of girls by the 40 events and then add the 670 boys. That will not give us the answer we are looking for. We need to add a Q to this number expression to help us understand that we need to add before we divide. Now, doesn't adding before dividing break the My Dear Aunt Sally rule? It does, but not if we do this. I'm going to add parentheses around the 670 plus 530. And now I want to tell you about the rest of the My Dear Aunt Sally rule. There are two letters that come before My Dear Aunt Sally, P and E. We say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The P stands for, you guessed it, parentheses. Anytime you see a numeric expression with parentheses, you'll complete the step in the parentheses first. The E stands for exponents, which we won't get to for a while, but just remember that it belongs there. Now that we figured out how to create our numeric expression to solve our word problem correctly, let's complete it using the PEMDAS or order of operations rules. First, we'll add 670 plus 530 to get an answer of 1,200. Now, we divide 1,200 by 40 to tell us how many events took place at the track and field event. 1,200 divided by 40 is 30, so there were 30 events with 40 students each participating at the track and field event. Please try these four problems, including parentheses, in your homework notebook. Don't forget, always follow Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally and work from left to right. For example, in our first problem, 17 minus parentheses, 38 minus 29 parentheses, you will work from left to right, but you will solve 38 minus 29 first then you will subtract that difference from 17. Press pause, complete your work, and come back for one last idea in this chapter. Before we build our last numeric expression, let's just review the steps in order of operations. First, we work inside our parentheses, please. Exponents will come next, but we'll learn about those later. Then, we multiply or divide from left to right, my dear, then we add and subtract from left to right, Aunt Sally. You might hear me call this PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That will help us remember the order, P-E-M-D-A-S, parentheses, exponents, multiply and divide, add and subtract, working from left to right. Okay, let's build our last numeric expression. Jimmy has 60 ounces of pecans and 64 ounces of macadamias. He mixes and packs them into nine ounce packets. He then packs eight packets. How many ounces of nuts does he have left? Okay, so first we know that Jimmy has 60 ounces of pecans and 64 ounces of macadamias. He's gonna add those all together and then divide them into nine ounce packets. So we wanna add 60 plus 64 to get one quantity. And we're going to put that in parentheses so we know we need to do that first. The next part of the problem tells us that Jimmy is going to divide the total quantity of nuts into nine ounce packets. He's going to pack up eight of those packets to take with him. So we need to show that nine ounces are being used times eight and taken away from the total quantity. So we'll put a subtraction sign here to show that he's using nine times eight ounces of nuts and taking that away from our 60 plus 64 ounces of nuts. This will tell us how much he has left when all is said and done. Now, why do we not have to put nine times eight in parentheses? Well, because order of operations tells us automatically 
that our multiplication will come before our subtraction. So we don't have to put this in parentheses to show that we need to do this first, unlike our addition problem, which must go in parentheses. Otherwise, we'd be doing our problem in the wrong order, right? We'd be taking our nine packet, nine ounces times eight packets before we ever knew our total sum of nuts. Okay, all right, let's finish up by simplifying this expression and finding out how many ounces of nuts Jimmy has left. We'll simplify the equation following the rules of PEMDAS. So, so we begin by evaluating what is in the parentheses. 60 plus 64 equals 124 minus 9 times 8. Now we work, still working left to right, and we follow PEMDAS again. We're going to ignore this subtraction sign because we need to do the multiplication first. The rules say so. So we have 124 minus 9 times 8, which equals 72. Now we can complete the last step of our problem, which is to subtract 72 from 124 and get an answer of 52. So our answer is that Jimmy has 52 ounces of nuts left after he packs his eight packs of nine ounces that he created from dividing 124 ounces of nuts into nine ounce packages. Got it? Good. Don't understand? No worries. Well, we can review in class tomorrow. Please finish up today's lesson with these four guided practice problems. Complete them in your homework notebook and show me all of your work so I can understand your thinking. Remember, work from right to left, but follow PEMDAS first. So if you see a multiplication problem, you still are going to do whatever is in the parentheses first. All right, complete these problems. We'll go over them together tomorrow. And I hope you enjoyed meeting my dear Aunt Sally.